I'm Mark Schneider. I'm an AIR Institute Fellow and a Vice President. Uh, my work is mostly on higher education, in particular on improving the accountability of, the, uh, of higher education institutions. In particular, I'm concerned about the returns on the investment that individuals, students, their families, and taxpayers make in higher education institutions. Good afternoon. I'm Peter Cookson, and I'm delighted and honored today to be talking with Mark Schneider. Welcome, Mark. Thank you. So you have this provocative thesis. You don't need a bachelor's degree to earn middle class wages anymore. Correct. Could you explain your data for that and sort of the reasoning behind your thesis? So I work with states, um, and I work with seven states so far, and basically the data are uh, provided by the states, and they merge the year the student graduated, hmm. uh, the program of study, you know, psychology, political science, engineering, um, and then wages that the graduate earns, and these could be one, five, and as many as 10 years mm -hmm. after completion. What we do is we just uh, look at the average wages of graduates from all of these programs, and we compare them. It's very simple. The information systems uh, include all post-secondary credentials, uh, certificates, associate degrees, uh, and bachelor's degrees. We also have data on master's and professional degrees. We've discovered several things. One is that the short-term certificates are fast growing. The associate's degree is faster growing than the bachelor's degree. So in most states, and in fact the nation as a whole, the number of credentials, sub-baccalaureate credentials being awarded is approaching the number of bachelor's degrees being awarded on an annual basis. So students are actually changing their behavior mm -hmm. and increasingly uh, taking degrees, uh, sub-baccalaureate degrees. The most important finding uh, in terms of what you asked has to do with the uh, high wages that students with these sub-baccalaureate credentials could earn if they know how to fix things that is, they're technicians or they have technical degrees, or they know how to fix people, so, uh, applied health, for example, or nursing. So these degrees put people squarely in the middle of the income mm. distribution of their states. And um, when I started this a few years ago, I was just reporting first year earnings, and people would say, oh my God, these data are terrible because um, students with a liberal arts degree or bachelor's degree in psychology, for example, will take a much longer time to catch on, uh, but ultimately their, their wonderful skills in analysis and deep thinking and all this will just, you know, will just swamp everything else. And in 10 years, the person who's working in Starbucks today will be a CEO uh, with a wonderful bachelor's degree in some liberal arts. And the guy who got a, a technical degree and is working in the oil patch in Texas is going to be replaced by a robot. So earnings one year out don't, are, are just not even worth thinking about. Well, it turns out, 10 years out, pattern's pretty much the same. That's a huge finding. What do you think is behind it? Um, two things. So the first thing is, I think, is relatively straightforward, and that is that the economy needs mid-skilled level people, right? And, and we've seen many studies about this, uh, that there may be as many as six million jobs that are unfilled uh, for mid-skills, right? You need some post-secondary training, but you don't need a bachelor's degree. Mm -hmm. So these programs, the Associates in Applied Science, the Certificate, are training students for these mid-skills jobs that are in great demand. In contrast, in most states that I've worked in, the, the, the people in charge say we have more than enough bachelor's degree students. The second one, which is more controversial, is that a lot of the liberal arts degrees are theoretically aimed at skills that hiring managers and CEOs say they want. 
And they always come back with the same litany year after year after year. We want people with 21st century skills. We want people who could do problem solving. We want people that critical could thinking. do critical thinking. You know all this stuff. And, and inevitably, some I've, I've seen this happen in, innumerable times. Someone in the audience, you know, that's a bachelor's degree in liberal arts. That's what people want. Well, if that's what the CEO wants and that's what the hiring manager says they want, they haven't told the actual people <laughs> who yeah. are doing the hiring because the fact of the matter is that they're not hiring political scientists with, with premiums. They're hiring people with math, engineering, technology, you know, those kinds of skills. Well, you just touched on one thing, question that I had, which is about the economic change. It seems to me there must be a huge shift in the economics now that we're not closely paying attention to. And therefore, I think one of the things, that, having talked to you about this a little before, one of the things that you're most interested in and, and propelled by is trying to find a way that low income or kids, working class kids and other kids are able to get into the job market. So what would you say to them now? So not everybody has the time, the money, the inclination, right. the skills uh, to spend four or five or six right. years getting a bachelor's degree. Um, and we need faster, cheaper, more efficient ways mm -hmm. to get students into the, into the, into the labor market. And, um, and a lot of the skills that lower income students have, um, disadvantaged students, are just not going to fit into a traditional bachelor's degree. All right, well, thank you very much. Uh, we've been talking with Mark Schneider about this really important topic um, because it talks about a shift in the, in the way in which uh, young people get their degrees or they get their certificates and how that relates to the economy. And I know you're going to continue on this research. Absolutely. So we'll be looking for more, more findings from Mark in the coming years. So thanks again, Mark. Thank really you. appreciate it. My pleasure.